Joker is John Doe, everyone knows Batman's real identity, and who does Amanda Waller think she is? This is my review for the Telltale Games Batman Enemy Within. It's headphones nail! and welcome to my review for the Telltale Games game Batman the Enemy Within. So this is an old game from 2017 and I think a sequel to the original game but also by Telltale Games called Batman. Um, no subtext or subtitle with that game but um, basically in the Enemy Within it's a game where Batman has to and Bruce Wayne have to delve into their inner demons and deal with a lot of the character choices um, resulting with having gone to Arkham having met um, villains like the Riddler and um, Joker who um, at the beginning of the game goes by John Doe so overall the game is intriguing in that it is a decision based game where the trust and help that you get with your various characters depends on how you interact with them and how much you trust them. So for example in the playthrough of the game, um, in the way I played it, I lost Jim Gordon's trust by not telling him the identity. Um, I ultimately I um, lost, gained, and ultimately relost the trust of Lucius Fox Lucius Fox's daughter um, by telling by telling her that um, her father was working with Bruce Wayne. Ultimately, telling her that you are Batman and that you want to bring her on, but then telling her that because she committed a crime in cold heartedly killing Riddler, that. Um, he ha the Batman has to take her in, so decisions like that um, play out a lot. And then by working with Amanda Waller quite a bit, um, there was a lot of back and forth in my um, decision making with her. But by ultimately trusting her, she agreed to keep Bruce Wayne's secret a secret, and by conversely, um, Batman's secret a secret and she understood the anger that Batman has and by telling her that he would um, take her down if, he, um, if his secret got out and he found out that it was her. So it was kind of a tenuous understanding that she understands why Bruce Wayne does what he does and understands the anger that he will have by revealing it because he's also protecting the people that he cares about. Um, and then even by the end of the fifth chapter, um, the twist at the end um, was not ultimately that your decisions as Bruce Wayne and Batman turned um, John Doe into Joker, but that Alfred decides to, to leave because he thinks that Bruce can't live without Batman. So I decided to take the route to see what would happen um, by telling Alfred that um, Bruce would ultimately hang up the mantle of Batman to see what would happen. But because it was the end of the game, they left it as they'll take it uh, one day at a time. So an interesting choice there. Um, but overall, an intriguing game that was split up in five chapters. Um, the first one deals with the return of Riddler, who was, ulti who was initially um, brought up and defeated by Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas Wayne, who I guess was part of the criminal underworld, but never told Bruce about it. Um, Alfred knew about it, but kept it a secret. So that was an interesting story or a bit of backstory there. From there, we deal with um, Bruce Wayne being um, used to infiltrate the pact of John Doe, Harley Quinn, and Bane in order to find out Riddler's secrets and find out what their pact was about and um, take it from there. That progressed into having to retrieve Riddler's um, secret poison to poison everybody and cure everybody of their sickness or ailment or whatever um, makes them who they are. So um, 
that was that. And then with the final chapter, um, it's dealing with the fallout of turning John Doe into Joker, their alliance with, um, or his alliance with Harley Quinn. Um, I don't know what happened to Bane, um, but I think as part of the poison, and now I'm drawing a blank on if they even showed it in the game, but either he went off on his own because the pact was broken or he was no longer who he was because the the poison undid his powers something i don't know whatever the he basically bane becomes a lesser part of the story just because of the focus on uh what happens with joker and harley quinn so overall the last chapter was the longest of the five but the most intriguing because you have to deal with the fallout of um trying to convince Catwoman to trust you, um, dealing with the revelation that Lucius Fox's daughter killed the Riddler, um, and also having to deal with um, Joker and Harley Quinn. Um, by the end of the game, you are given a chance to redeem and save um, Jim Gordon because throughout the game, because Waller doesn't trust him and because of um, your actions and interactions in trusting Waller over Gordon, he's let removed from the force or basically fired from the force. So you are given the chance to bring him on. I kind of rushed that decision, so I was unable to see what happens by bringing him on or bringing him back. Um, but there is that option to try and see, try to bring him back to the force and give him his job back. But overall, a decent game. The controls are okay. Um, it seems like they, they felt a bit sluggish in the reaction in um, playing the game, but for the most part they were, you know, swiping down and up and left and right for uh, movement interactions. Um, moving your character around in certain points of the game was okay. Um, touching the controls for um, attack movements was also okay, but overall controls were sluggish. But that's also on the flip side made up by the good graphical performance and visuals of the game. So it felt a lot like a living graphics graphical novel. So um, playing through the game, it was very nice. It looked like living art. So I enjoyed watching the game and when a decision came up to be made, I was often so intrigued by the story that I did miss a few um, times to make a decision because I read it, I noticed it a little late and then by the time I finished reading the time to um, make the decision had run out. So that's something to be forewarned about that once you get into the game, um, you only have a limited amount of time to make the um, talking point interaction. So if you get caught up in the game, it's easy to miss, but so make sure you pay attention to things like that. Um, same thing with um, attack and interactions and moving your character around. When you are fighting, you have a limited amount of time to make that choice, so you do have to make sure you interact quickly. Um, so you do have to read a little bit quickly and make that choice, but overall the game moves, moves along pretty quickly. Um, I think I finished the game in about 11 to 13 hours or so. So some parts are quicker than others, some parts are slower than others. Um, overall, each chapter I want to say is probably about an hour and a half long each. Uh, maybe just under two hours each, so probably about, so, and it also depends on how, what choice trades you make, so probably about at minimum you're looking at about a nine to ten hour game if you get through more decision trees it probably is a little bit longer like you saw in my game my playthrough so um something to keep in mind there but overall i do recommend it is it, it is a good game um the only downside is that it's a bit sluggish in the controls so if i was to grade it i'd probably give it about a b plus to an a minus um like i said the visuals were good and interesting the decision choices were good the story that you get was well presented just the um um, movements and controls are a bit sluggish so that kind of takes away from the game you're not sure if you hit the right um, if you hit the button or not and then there's a couple of times that early on where I thought I hit the buttons but I didn't so um, it all leads in a decision that I didn't want but the game rewinds to a point 
in the beginning of the most recent interaction tree so you're not redoing the whole level you're just doing the most recent segment so you're really only going back a couple of minutes in order to replay that segment which is a good touch in the game so overall i recommend it like i said about a b plus a minus so overall pretty good um it makes me want to go back and play the um first batman game to see um how that how well it tie the two games tie into each other and see if the first game get sheds more light on the whole lady arkham storyline and um fill in that piece of the puzzle so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments concerns or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website's patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and of course for um, by supporting the show, you get access to early content, bonus episodes and reviews, and things like that. So thank you um, for supporting the show that way if you do so. But that's all there is for this review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.